imaging of the cranial vertebral junction. Well, we are going to discuss about anatomy, imaging modalities, landmarks of, uh, and craniometry pathology associated with all the CBG. Anatomy, the components uh, include occipital bone, atlas and axis. So the articulations and ligaments among these would be cervical medullary junction, the lower cranial nerves, the vertebral arteries, the hypoglossal canal, the atlanto occipital joint, and the atlanto axial joints. So detailed understanding of this anatomy is essential to know the CVJ anomalies. The imaging modalities would uh, start, uh, the basic investigation would be an X-ray lateral and an open, open mouth view for the coronal, flexion and extension views in lateral, uh, which is less than 6 mm in children and less than 3 mm in adults, CT, our, uh, CT myelography and MRI. The joints. When it comes to the joints, atlanta occipital joint would be a synovial joint where uh, flexion, extension and lateral bending can be demonstrated. Median atlanta ax axial joints would be a synovial as well. Uh, the, it, it, it is mainly uh, for the pivotal movements and uh, rotational movements. The lateral atlanta axial joints would be an arthroidal joint where flexion and extension can be done and axial rotation also can be done. The atlanta axial alignment would be less than 3 mm in adults and less than 5 mm in children. Whereas the posterior dental space would be less than, would be around 19 mm in adults and 16 mm in children. The ligaments, anterior longitudinal membrane or anterior atlanto occipital membrane, anterior atlanto occipital ligament, apical ligament, and tectorial membrane. This will be anterior. The posterior would be posterior atlanto occipital ligament and the nuchal uh, uh, thickening. The periodontic uh, tissues include transverse apical and alar ligaments. This image demonstrates the uh, all the four ligaments of the new uh, apex, tectorial membrane, apical ligament, anterior atlanto occipital ligament, and anterior atlanto occipital membrane. The per periodontal ligaments, which include transverse principles, uh, transverse ligament, which is the principal stabilizer of the joint, the apical, alar, apical and alar ligaments, uh, which the alar ligaments are uh, for the rotation and they limit the anterior subluxation of the uh, cervical spine. This image demonstrates the uh, periodontal ligaments and their respective uh, relationships. In pediatric uh, craniovertebral junction anomalies, incomplete ossification of the sin compresses and epiphyses can be seen. So there is epiphyseal variance also can be associated and there will be associated hypermobility of the uh, cervical spine as well. So atlas, this is the first uh, uh, bone of the cervical spine where three ossification centers, primary ossification centers are seen. This forms a ring, at a complete ring will be ossified at three years of age. The four primary ossification centers of axis, the second uh, cervical bone would be the body and dense fusion at three, six and 11 years and the os terminal, which appears at three years and fuses at 12 years. So how do you differentiate it from a fracture, the epiphyseal plate versus a fracture? In case of fracture, it would be irregular, it would be non stereotic and unpredictable, whereas an epiphyseal plate would be smooth and regular with predictable locations and sclerotic margins. The landmarks, uh, the landmarks are essential for knowing uh, or, or measuring the craniovertebral junction anomalies. So they would be uh, mainly uh, concerned with these uh, measurements which are required for, uh, to compare with the normal values. So the uh, craniometry uh, includes a lot of lines. So the lines uh, would be Chamberlain line, McGregor's line, McRae's line, Wickenham Clivers baseline, Belcher basal angle, Atlanta occipital joint axis, Clival canal angle, bimastoid line, and digastric line. The Chamberlain line or the McGregor line would be from the tip of the dense 
which, which uh, the tip of the dense lies just below the line. So it's maximum uh, of five of them above this uh, uh, line is considered uh, normal. Uh, more than five mm would be an abnormal. Uh, it would connect the heart, uh, the uh, it would connect the, the base of the clivus to the tip of the dense. So the, the dense shouldn't go more than five mm above this line. The Wackenham clivus line would be the line which would be along the clivus as well. Vulture basal angle. This line, uh, I mean, this is an uh, angle measurement where the first line is drawn from the nasion to the tuberculum to the basion. So the normal angle would be uh, less than 140 degrees or equal to 140 degrees. In case of flatty basia, where there's abnormal flattening of the skull, the angle would be increased. Clivus canal angle. The clivus canal angle of 150 degree inflection and 180 degree in extension. Ventral cord compression of less than 150 degrees. Wackenham clivus baseline, the basilar line would fall tangential, tangential to the posterior aspect of the dens. The normal Atlanta occipital joint axis angle would be around 124 to 127 degrees, which can be measured on the coronal images. The CBJ anomalies ca uh, can be classified into congenital, developmental, traumatic, knee inflammatory, infective, or neoplasm. The clinical features uh, include uh, signs such as cervical cord of the brainstem or the cerebellum or the nerve cranial nerve syndrome symptoms such as vertigo, dysphagia, tongue, tongue atrophy, and uh, vascular supply atrophy or the, the problems. So the motor myelopathy, the sensory deficits, the brainstem dysfunction, lower cranial nerve dysfunction, and vascular compromise can be seen as clinical feature. The most common neurological deficit, however, would be a myelopathy with the most common symptom such as neck pain in 80 to 85 percent of the children. So most common cranial abnormality will be her, will cause hearing loss. The congenital and developmental disorders of the bone uh, include the bone disorders or anomalies, uh, spondylar dysplasia such as achondroplasia or uh, MPS or Marfan's or Down syndrome. Encephalomyelodysplasia includes Chiari malformations or cephalosis. Isolated cephalosis. The bony abnormalities uh, of the occiput, uh, such as spondylar hyperplasia or the basi occiput hyperplasia or the Atlanta occipital assimilations, can be associated with re reduced skull base height and basal, in, uh, basal angles. No relation between the severity of severity and deformity with the clinical symptoms. So, a large deformity can have a small clinical symptom as also. And the foramen magnum diameter is very important to analyze the bony abnormalities with respect to the base of the skull. Atlas, Atlanta occipital assimilations, aplasia and hyperplasia of the atlas, clefts or rachiskisis of the atlas arches and split axis. The CVG relationships are not affected in these cases. For the axis, os odontoidium or persistent os uh, trimineal odontoid aplasia and fusion on abnormalities mostly involves the dense and not associated with bony abnormalities. The basilar invagination is a primary, primary developmental anomaly where the vertebral column is abnormally high and collapsed into the skull base. Radiological findings, it causes basi occipital hypoplasia, occipital condylar hypoplasia, and atlanta occipital assimilation. Basilar invagination was a basilar impression or a cranial setting with rheumatoid arthritis versus plaque basia. Basal angle will be more than 140. Increased associated with Chiari malformations and seringomyelia or seringohydromyelias. Types include anterior paramedian. In anterior, there is a short clivus associated with uh, basilar invagination. The chamberlain line is violated. The clivus canal angle is reduced. The vacuum clivus line, basal line is usually normal. The bowstring of deformity include the CVJ anomalies. The paramedian basilar imagination of the condylar hyperplasia in, uh, seen in the coronal plane, which compress from side to side, the violation of the Atlanta occipital joint angle and limits the movement of the Atlanta occipital joint, causing vertebral artery compression. The Atlanta occipital assimilation include can be partial or complete. 
basal invagination, clivus canal angle is reduced, which can be anterior, posterior, or lateral, and it might cause sudden death. Basal invagination is due to the effect on the cervical medullary junction, or due to the, can be due to the compression or associated chiari or any vertebral artery compression, stenosis. Axis abnormalities include os oratorium. It's an independent bone of in place of dense, may fuse with atlas, hypertrophic, anterior arch of the atlas can be associated. Uh, incomplete in atlanto occipital instability uh, is common. Differential diagnosis would be a fracture. The atlanto axial instability can be uh, caused due to trauma or Down syndrome or infection such as tuberculosis, parotitis, mastoiditis, or upper respiratory tract infections. Inflammatory causes include rheumatoid arthritis and seronegative arthropathies or Marcus syndrome in case of MPS. Achondroplasia. Achondroplasia, the patient usually presents uh, uh, with short neck, basilar invagination, chiari malformations, seringomalia, partial atlanta occipital assimilations, fusion of the C4 to C6 vertebrae bodies. To summarize, Bones, joints, and ligaments, spinal cord, lower cranial nerves, and vertebral arteries, vessels, the prevertebral soft tissues are very, very essential to look at all these features and you know to conclude whether there is a prevertebral, a pediatric craniovertebral junction anomaly or it was associated with something and around the axial instability. The craniometry is very essential to, uh, to assess the instability and the craniovertebral junction anomalies. Uh, especially in case of basilar imagination, basilar impression, platypatia, and congenital malformations such as chiari, achondroplasia, uh, mucopolis acridosis, and Down syndrome. The acquired lesions are uh, mostly traumatic, associated with head injuries. Lateral view is uh, essential for this, and the plain radiographs, indirect signs of the prevertebral soft tissues contour. Occipital atlantal subluxation. The normal occipital atlantal joint would be approximately 1 to 2 mm, whereas a normal lateral atlantal occipital joint would be 2 to 3 mm. The normal basion dense interval would be less than 12 mm. Ligamentous injury. Major stabilizers include the alar ligament, the tectorial membrane, and the tectorial transverse ligaments. Infl infections or inflammations can also be associated with CVJs. Uh, the rheumatoid arthritis is one of the most common uh, arthritis associated with uh, a CVG. Psoriasis, osteoarthritis, synovial cysts, and uh, CPPD and tuberculosis are the other causes. Rheumatoid arthritis uh, in a cranial setting, there is atlanto axial subluxation. There is a, the, the panels of the uh, uh, atlanto occipital and atlanto axial joints uh, will enhance on contrast administration. So there will be an associated erosion in the uh, x rays. But that, uh, at the, especially at the level of the attachment of the transverse ligament and ligamentum changes with, with joint occlusion. In case of tuberculosis, local pain with restriction of mobility, uh, uh, it can be staged into three stages. The stage one would include a normal, uh, I mean, appearance of retropharyngeal abscess with the normal bone, but a retropharyngeal abscess with or without atlanto axial dislocation with mild bony destruction would be stage two. In stage three, uh, retropharyngeal abscess with atlanto axial uh, dislocation with broad, gross bony destruction would be uh, stage 3. Retroodontoid uh, tumor, uh, pseudotumors can be degenerative, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, gout, CPPD, long standing hemiarthropathies. They might usually complicate, I mean, they might cause a complication of compressive myelopathy usually. Neoplasms. The neoplasms include benign ones and malignant ones. The benign ones can be meningioma, schwannoma, or a quadoma. Malignants can, malignancy uh, includes the most common thing would be a metastasis, or it can be a multiple myeloma, or a quadoma, or a chondral sarcoma. To summarize, trauma, traumatic causes in, uh, into the soft tissues, bones, joints, ligaments, cords, and vessels, infections. Such as rheumatoid arthritis, tuberculosis, seronegative arthritis, retroodontoid pseudotumors, and neoplasms. Thank you. To conclude, wide variety of diseases such as uh, are, are seen in CVJ. So, multimodality approach is always needed 
to distinguish potentially symptomatic lesions from insignificant congenital anomalies and normal variants. Thank you.